Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you my best tips and tools to inspire you to create beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am back with part two of my 2024 tiered tray series. Today I'm going to show you how to make another type of tiered tray and I'm going to bring you some spring tiered tray home decor DIYs. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. So the first thing we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna make a tiered tray with these rectangular wood trays from Hobby Lobby, a couple wood candlesticks, and a finial, and some doll head wood balls. Now these four trays are $14.99 regularly. You can see there the different dimensions. We're not gonna use the smallest one. I'm just gonna make three tiers on this tray. Now these are unfinished wood, so I am going to sand the edges, the sides, the middle on the inside, the edges, everything on all three of our trays to get them nice and smooth before we start painting them. Now for this tiered tray, because I wanna be able to use it for any season or holiday, I am going to paint everything white. Now I don't want anybody jumped on my throat for using white. You paint yours whatever color you want. If you wanna do black, if you wanna do antique wax, if you wanna do a color that you use for a lot of holidays, like maybe red, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna also use these two candlesticks. Now you can see they do have this metal piece in them to hold a like taper candle. One of them popped out really easily. This other one, I had to just kind of bend it until I could get it all inside. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna be uh, gluing these to the bottoms of our trays. So I am, once I have the tops of the candlesticks nice and flat, I am going to give each of my two candlesticks and my finial a coat of white paint. Now this is probably um, one of the more expensive tiered trays that I'm going to do. But again, if you find these wood pieces or something similar at thrift stores, you can save some money. And I only buy wood items at Hobby Lobby when they're on sale. I'm also going to paint four of these balls that are flat on one side. I think they're doll heads and we're gonna use these as feet for our tiered tray. So everything gets a coat of white paint and then we'll be ready to put our tray together. Now once our three wood trays are dry, I am gonna sand these again with a 400 grit just to get them nice and smooth. We want this to be a nice looking tray. You could also, if you decided to uh, paint the edges on each tray a different color, maybe you wanna go with black for that. And I am gonna sand the inside and the bottom of each of the trays as well. Okay, now we're gonna put our tray together. I'm gonna use the super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree and the first thing I'm doing is on the bottom of my bottom tray, I'm gluing these four balls for our feet in the corners and I am using my fingers to make sure they are lined up pretty much the same on all four corners. Next, I'm gonna take my finial. I measured where the center of my top tray is and I'm gonna glue that down in the center. So my strategy here is to start with the very bottom of the tiered tray and the very top and then work my way to the middle. Now this is that bottom tray. I am measuring where the center is and then I'm gonna place down on the center as close as I can get one of my candlesticks. But before I glue this down, I'm measuring a lot. Like I took a lot of it out of the video. I measure back and forth to try to make sure it's in the center side to side and then that it's in the center front to back. So measure as much as you want. This was my strategy for making sure I got it in the middle. Then I made a few little pencil marks so that I know where to place it back down once I put glue on the bottom of my candlestick. So using more of that wood glue, I'm gonna place it back down in the middle of my pencil marks. And because it's not hot glue, it's wood glue, I have a little bit of time to move it around 
if I need to. I am gonna weight that down a little bit. Now I am coming, this is our middle tray, okay? And I'm finding the center of that as well. I'm using the second candlestick to draw my circle where the top will fit in. Once I get that drawn, I'm going to put glue on the top of the candlestick that I've already glued to my bottom tray. So I'm gonna put the glue on that top edge and then I'm gonna turn it upside down on top of the bottom of the middle tray. And you can't see anything because it's covered up. But trust me, it's there. Now this is the bottom of my top tray. I've got the finial glued to the underside. I have it propped up with a couple cans of Waverly chalk paint. And I'm finding the center of the bottom of my top tray. I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna find the center. And we're gonna glue this second candlestick to the bottom of our top tray. Now the last thing we have to measure and glue is we're going to attach the top half of our tiered tray to this middle tray. I'm finding the center. I'm gonna place down my candlestick and again, get it nice and centered before I draw my circle and then glue it down. And once we let that all dry, here is what our rectangular tiered tray looks like. I love it, it is so classy looking and I can change this up for any season or holiday because it if you're stopping by my channel today for the first time, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I really hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. I hope everyone will tap the bell. Be sure your notifications are set to all so YouTube should let you know each time I upload a new video or go live here on my channel. Now that we have our tiered tray made, let's make some spring tiered tray decor. These are some of the items that I will be using, mostly from Dollar Tree, maybe from another craft store as well. First thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take four of these foam dice from Dollar Tree. This is another inexpensive way you can make blocks. And I am going to paint them with pink cloud. You can see over there on the left, I chose from my stash, a few patterns and colors of spring scrapbook paper that are going to kind of be my color scheme for these tiered tray decor. This is again, spring, this is not Easter. We'll probably do that next week or the week after in an upcoming video. So my strategy for painting these foam dice is I paint the top and then I go down about halfway on each of the sides, let it dry, then I come back and do the bottoms. Now with my four patterns of paper, I'm gonna cut a one and three quarter inch square from each of the four. And we're going to use these just on one side of our blocks. And then we'll end up putting our letter sticker on top of that. You can use the same blocks for um, Easter if you'd like, although I'm not even sure what word I'm gonna do for Easter. But for now, we're gonna do the word grow on these spring blocks. Once I have my four squares of paper cut, I am going to round the corners because the space on each of the foam dice is kind of rounded as well, and I don't want those sharp corners sticking out. Once I have my paper ready, a little bit of Mod Podge, and then we'll stick down that square of paper on the side of the block, and you'll do this for all four of your blocks.
I did then go back and put Mod Podge over the top of each of the papers as well. Then I'm gonna use these uh, brown craft letters. You can use any sticker letters that you have. These were just the right size. I believe these originally came from Hobby Lobby. But like I said, I'm just gonna spell the word grow and then I'm gonna do a little bit more Mod Podge over that sticker so that it doesn't come off and then our blocks will be finished. You can also do Mod Podge on all the sides of the block if you'd want, but it's very unlikely that the paint is going to scratch off. We're gonna make another beaded garland for our spring tiered tray. I wanna show you how you can take a beaded garland that's already made. This one I believe came from Timu last year, but I know Dollar Tree has some as well. There's nothing wrong with it except for I don't really want the yellow and purple beads. So I'm taking them off of the strand and adding them to my stash. Then I'm gonna put a piece of clear tape on the end and I'm going to restring my beads using 10 each of the blue, the white, the green, and the pink. These are just the colors that go best with my color scheme. So if you find beaded garlands and you're not quite sure about all the colors, just buy it and take off the beads you don't want. So instead of using that Easter bunny, because this is just spring and not Easter, I'm gonna use one of these wood flowers from Hobby Lobby, but I'm gonna cut the stem and the leaves off because I just want the flower part. And then taking two of our scrapbook papers that we're kind of using as our theme, I'm going to trace the flower onto the back of two of the different papers and we're going to Mod Podge them onto our flower shape. Once our first paper flower is pretty dry, I'm gonna take my sander and go around the edges to get any excess off, and then we'll flip it over and Mod Podge the other paper flower on to the other side. and we'll sand the edges of that flower as well. I don't know if you saw, but I did poke through the hole so that I would be able to find it with my Crocodile Big Bite, so I could then string our flower onto our shorter beaded garland now. I'm gonna tie it in a knot, and then we're gonna take the end of our string up through those first couple of beads, the pink one and the green one, and then we'll snip it off. I do this so that the end of the jute is hidden within the beads. Now you could definitely stop there with your beaded garland, but I'm gonna use a few of my spring mini stencils from Magnolia. This one has a little wreath that says, Hello Spring, and I'm just gonna use a tiny amount of black chalk paste to personalize this beaded garland even more.
The next little decor we're gonna make for our tiered tray is super cute and easy. We're gonna make this nest in a pot. I'm using one of these small, I'd say it's about two and a half inches tall, terracotta pots. I'm gonna paint it with the color Dusk, matches with our scrapbook paper on the sides, and then we'll do the bottom as well as the top edge of our pot. Once we're done painting that, we'll just set it aside to dry. Once that is dry, I'm gonna take another one of my mini stencils and I'm not gonna use the watering can, I'm just gonna do the word spring on the little pot to decorate it a little bit more before we add the nest and the bird. Again, just using a tiny amount of black chalk paste. To make the nest, I'm gonna put some hot glue around the edge of our pot, and I'm gonna use this mini grapevine wreath. It's not very flat, so you may have to press it down, add a little bit of hot glue to reinforce it. I found that I needed this because the nest was um, a little small for the opening, and I liked that this gave a little bit more dimension to the project. This is just a little uh, bird, I believe, from Michael's in their spring section, and the little nest as well. We're just gonna set that together. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know people are enjoying my content. Also, if you leave a comment or two, that helps as well. Next, we're gonna give a little makeover to this small house. This happened to be from Target in a tiered tray set. I don't really want the bunny, but it wasn't easy to remove, so I'm just gonna turn it around to the back. We can always use the bunny side for Easter if we want. And I'm going to trace the back of the house on another one of the pieces of our scrapbook paper. Once we have that house shape traced, we will cut that out and then we'll go ahead and Mod Podge it onto the back of this little house. Once that paper was dry, I did do another layer of Mod Podge over the top, especially paying attention to the edges so that my scrapbook paper wouldn't come off. Once that is dry, we will sand the edges as well. Now taking one of these Woodward stickers from Hobby Lobby, I'm going to paint the word Hope with Moss, Waverly Chuck Paint. Once that dries, we will add that to the middle of our little house. One final touch I'm gonna to do with the black chalk paste that was left on my squeegee. I'm just going to go around the edges of the house just to frame it out a little bit and add a little bit more interest to it. Next, we're gonna take a salt shaker from Dollar Tree and we're gonna turn it into a little mini flower vase. So actually this one might have been from Dollar General, I'm not sure, but you could use one of the ones from Dollar Tree as well. I'm going to give this two coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color Moss. I'm just loving how all of these colors are coming together. I can't wait to show you what it looks like. I'm gonna paint all the way up, even on the threads a little bit, even though we'll eventually be covering up those threads with jute twine. So give a good coat, let it dry completely, and then you can come back for a second. Next, putting some hot glue, I'm going to wrap some twine around that threaded area where the lid for the salt shaker was attached. This is just a fun way to add a little farmhouse touch to this spring mini flower vase. Now, when I get close to the end, I am going to put a little glue and secure the string, and then I'm gonna add one of these little mini wood butterflies. This came from a set from Hobby Lobby that had some different small wood cutouts. Once I get that butterfly strung on there, I'm gonna wrap it a few more times around 
and then secure it and trim the extra. Once you have your vase decorated, you can just add whatever fake florals or live flowers that you'd like. Next, we're taking one of these mini easel clipboards from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to add some of these felt flowers that also came from Dollar Tree. So these come with two flowers and two pairs of different types of leaves. I'm gonna go with these darker green leaves and just glue them onto the front. Just an easy way to make a simple, cute little decor for your tiered tray. Once I had the flowers glued on, I didn't really like that clip that was there because we weren't really utilizing it. So I'm gonna pull off the bow, remove some of that glue and get that clip out of there. It's just kind of in a little hole there. So once I get that removed, I'm gonna retie the little uh, bow there and glue it right over that hole. And the last thing we're gonna do for our tiered tray today is a mini rolling pin. Now we decoupaged one last week. This time I'm just gonna take this blank rolling pin and I'm just gonna paint it. I'm gonna paint pink in the middle and I'm gonna use moss for the handles. You'll see here, once the pink is dry, I'll use a little bit of painter's tape to tape off the pink area and then paint the handles with that moss green. And we're gonna use one more of our mini stencils to personalize this decor. I'm just gonna use the words from this one that says spring is in the air. Again, using a small amount of our black chalk paste. And to finish off our rolling pin, I'm gonna take two lengths of this light blue and white gingham ribbon and just tie a double knot around each of the handles. And here it is, all of the items we made for our spring tiered tray decor. I love them. I love how the colors go together and can't wait to show you what they look like on the tiered tray that we also made today. Here they are. I have these three items on the top, three items on the middle, and then just the blocks. On the bottom, you can see there's lots of room to add other things that you may find at Dollar Tree or when you're out and about. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of this video and some other ideas of themes you would like to see tiered tray decor for. Thanks so much and have a great night. See you next time.